Hey, this is Robert Grossman, and I'm here today with Deborah Banks, massage therapist, healer, and owner of the Elite Muscular Therapy Bodywork Studio in Vancouver, Washington. I asked Deborah to interview with me today because of the special type of bodywork they do at her studio. The massage menu that she has goes way beyond the usual therapeutic massage and deep tissue massage. They also offer more exotic choices like Hawaiian Lomi Lomi massage and barefoot ashiatsu. And Deborah has a lot of very interesting things to say about the way she works. The whole place has a very special energy, and today I'm going to be inviting Deborah to share a little bit of that with us. So, Deborah, thank you for being on the call with me today. Well, thank you, Robert. Deborah, let's start by talking about how you first got into the bodywork business. Can you just think back and tell me about the moment when you first realized that you want to do bodywork for a living? It started when I was very young. I started probably around fifth grade. And I, my father had a friend that was a merchant seaman, and he would travel the world and get different types of body work, and he would come back and show me different techniques. And so when I was very young, I could make your, your headache go away or make your backache disappear. And so I waited till I was 18 and thought about going back to school to be a body worker. Life got in the way, and then I ended up going back to school when I was 34, and started as a massage therapist. Oh, that's amazing. So the seeds were planted when you were in fifth grade. This man brought you these techniques from all around the world. Yes, he did. And I think I was just naturally hands-on anyway. He just kind of pointed me in that direction. That's fabulous. You know, my dad used to take me to like Greek restaurants and Vietnamese restaurants, and I thought that was like a cultural broadening, which actually eventually ended in me living overseas. And with you, you had this merchant seaman who brought these techniques from his travels. It's amazing how these seeds get planted when we're very little and they just sprout through our, the rest of our life. Exactly. And I really appreciate what Uncle Ron did for me. What kind of techniques did he share with you? Do you remember? A lot came from Japan. He also married a Japanese woman and brought her over here. So a lot of his techniques were from Japan. One thing that I think is interesting about your story is that you actually bought into an existing business. Elite Muscular Therapy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were around for about five years before you even got involved. Exactly. Why did you decide to get started by purchasing an existing massage studio? Well, they were friends of mine that we went to school together, and we knew once we graduated that we wanted to work together. I had other plans. I wanted to kind of play for a year before I really got serious about buying a business. But once we graduated from school, and received our license, it just progressed to where the business was up for sale and we kind of jumped on it and, and, and bought the business. So it was a very short time from graduating from school, receiving our licenses, and then buying the business. It was less than a month, I guess. Oh. So we kind of just jumped right in without knowing what we were doing. I, I think that takes a lot of courage because... By actually buying a business, you're really making a commitment to it, aren't you? I mean, you didn't start small working out of your spare room or something. Exactly. I was doing school. I was um, giving massages inside my home, and I thought I was going to enjoy doing that for a year. But we bought the business, and the three of us had no clue how to run a business. We just had had faith in ourselves, and it seemed to work because I'm still in business, so I don't know if it was just luck or, you know, the gods were looking after us. <laughs> and, and it's been almost 20 years since then, hasn't it? Yes. We have 19 years and a few months now. So, yes, almost 20 years. So how long did it take before you knew you were going to make it? Oh, my goodness. I just had faith. We really did. I, I mean, some weeks I worked six days a week, and I worked it to where... Now I work four days a week, so as the years progressed, we brought in other people to help, and it just seemed like everything lined up. I don't recall knowing in my head that this is going to work. It just seemed like it was the natural flow of things. So you went in kind of naive from a business point of view, but obviously you were trained as a massage therapist. Very naive as a business owner, but I really had a lot of confidence in myself as a body worker. <laughs> Let's talk about that business owner aspect for a minute. I'm going to come back to the body worker part. As a business owner, what has been your biggest, ugliest, toughest challenge? As a business owner, I think you end up growing up 
all of my weaknesses, if you want to call them that, show up as a business owner and you either work through them and your business thrives or you don't and it dies. You know, rivalries with your sister when you're growing up, you're not being able to communicate with your mom or your dad and they show up in your business life through your clients. It's been a, a learning experience and a growth personally for myself owning my business. So it's, it's, it's just recognizing your... I wouldn't call them faults. It's just something to grow through being a business owner. Let's talk about the body work. Let me just start with a really broad question. In your experience, what is the healing process really about? What's going on? I believe that when people come in for massage, it's being disconnected from your body. And I think going in and having good touch, it helps to ground people. So you can feel what's going on with your body, so you can feel your feelings. I think a lot of times the way our society is that we're so running so fast and you want more and bigger and people get disconnected from themselves. So it's taking, whether it's 15 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, just some time for yourself and just getting back into your body, grounding yourself. Hmm. You know... I was very sick for many years and my body was in so much pain. I just wanted to do anything to not feel it. I went into spiritual things, meditating where I would like float out of my body or forget that it existed. I would bury myself in intellectual stuff, studying books and equations, anything to not feel my body. You know, over the past few years, my healing process has more and more been about getting back in touch with the body through, not only through body work, also different forms of exercise, mobility training, anything to feel the body has been so key for me. Well, I believe, Robert, that because we don't want to feel people distract themselves by being alcoholics or workaholics or doing for other people when you don't even take the time to do for yourself. And I, as a woman, as a body worker, as a sister and a daughter and a friend, I can't take care of you if I'm not taking care of me. It's like being on the airplane and putting on that oxygen mask for the person next to you. You've got to put it on for yourself before you can help someone else. Massage therapy, acupuncture, yoga, it gets you back in touch with yourself so you can be a better person. Mind, body, spirit, it's the whole, the whole package. One thing you and I have in common is we've both worked with shamans as part of our personal healing process. What has that been like for you? For me, it just kind of opened myself up to being very conscious of taking care of myself. He's been teaching me how to move my own energy. It's helped me to let go of the things that don't matter, Robert. Life is pretty simple, and we kind of complicate it sometimes. But I have found that it's very important that I move my energy, that I eat right, I sleep well, I expose myself to like-minded people. And all the rest of the stuff will take care of it. That's really true, isn't it? I mean, that's one of the unique gifts of the shamanic work is that it really reconnects us with the simplicity of life. Exactly. And we, you know, you living in, in Europe compared to me living in the States, it's so complicated here, I and mean, it, it doesn't need to be. You know, life's too short, and we make things so complicated. When I was working with uh, Hilario... He rarely talked very much, but one of the longest talks that he gave to the whole group uh, before ceremonies, he would, once in a while, he would give a talk. One of the longest talks he gave was about how important it is to clean the kitchen. Exactly. Clean the kitchen. Exactly. (laughs) My guy, Justin, he doesn't talk a lot either. I mean, when we started the class, he never told us what to do. He just said, I just want you to sit here, and then he would play the drums. And then a few sessions later, he goes, well, I want you to stand up, and I just want you, I mean, you can move if you want to. If you don't, you just, you know, but 
as he played the drums, you cannot not move. And so I used to feel very conscious about maybe what people are looking at at me and seeing me move in a certain way. And I really dropped that pretty quickly. And now I just go and I just, I just move. I just move with the energy. I always feel as when I leave, I feel better. I'm always grounded. I'm more calm. Things are more clear to me. So I do like that they don't speak a lot because he wants you to move your own energy. That's what it's about. It's not an intellectual approach. No, he's willing to, if you have questions, a lot of times I think we make it more complicated than it is. Mm -hmm. And so he's always willing to answer my question or anyone else's, but it's it's the simplicity um, path that I see he wants to see. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I I have to say, I do think there are, are intellectual concepts in the shamanic work that are actually incredibly useful. Very much. But that's not what it's about. Those are supporting. Well, he gives us readings. I call it homework. He will give us something to read, and it's only three or four pages, and then he has us come back and speak about it, ask questions and stuff. So I think it's just because I'm at this very um, early and very young at it, He's kind of slowly moving me to where I need to go. That sounds really nice. Well, Robert, it's nice to know that you've had a similar experience. You're, you're a little bit more further in it to it than I am, but it's kind of nice that there's people out there that are doing this, the same thing. It's one of the things that really helped me to turn my whole life around. Before I got into that, I was very successful in business, but I was just empty inside, and I was also extremely sick in my body. I had no idea that there was anything in the universe that could possibly guide me through life other than intellect and following the path that was mapped out for me by like my father and social expectations, this incredibly shallow worldview. The simplicity of it itself is, is what just got me in touch with I don't know, some sort of an inner voice that said, hey, there's a little bit more to life than this if you want there to be. And that's what made my life worth living eventually. Well, I think you, that's what moved us into that direction was that little voice telling you that you have one aspect of our lives that is moving along. But if you don't have the other components, you feel empty, something's lost. So, I mean, it's just incorporating the mind, body, and the spirit because I believe that I, as, as a woman and as a body worker, I can't be whole if all three of those are not connected together, if they're not balanced. The illness brings that out. You know, you can't be balanced if only one part of your life is working and the other two are not or if two parts of your life is working and in the third part is not. That mind, body, and spirit, it's one unit. That's right. I've come to believe that all disease actually is a gift in disguise, if we, if we accept it that way, because it's discomfort, right? And that discomfort forces us to find a cure for the discomfort. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I believe that whatever disease that I've had has moved me in the direction that I've been going to heal myself and hopefully, you know, to help to heal the planet and the people around me and my environment and my community. For all the listeners who have come this far listening to us talk, how can they get in touch with you? Do you have a website? Yes, it's, it's at EliteMuscularTherapy.com. We also have a telephone number that you can call to. 360-693-3863, and we're open um, six days a week, 9 to 6 on Monday through Friday, and 10 to 5 on Saturday. Okay, and you're located in Vancouver, Washington. Okay, yes, so all of you out there, if you're located in Vancouver, Washington, write down that address. You have the chance to receive body work from Deborah firsthand. Deborah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you. And thank you very much, Robert. I really enjoyed speaking with you, too. 
If you're a wellness business owner or manager, a free 30-minute tune-up call with Robert could be a great experience for you. Your business can be more fun, more effective, and more profitable. Just go to wellnessbusinesstuneup.com to get started now or call us at 800-430-1567.